Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, I decided to do a TCG tier list specifically for locals, and what I expect to be seeing most play at locals, as well as most notably what can beat and what can compete at the local level. And now why am I doing this? Well, because honestly, that's what I play. I mostly do locals. I don't actually play in those bigger tournaments. And I think that there are much better people and much better players who can actually tell you what to play at things like YCSs or regionals. I mean, Joshua Schmidt and uh, Jesse Cotton both have done tier lists for the most recent meta for that level of event. And honestly, I just don't participate in them, and they're very different from what I do participate in. So I figured, hey, I'm going to explain the decks that I believe to be very good in the upcoming meta for specifically locals, which is kind of a lot different from what you would expect at a uh, regional or higher tier event. So this is just going to go over um, kind of the best decks in a similar vein, uh, but more so with... Um, different tiers. So here we have the best deck, we have strong meta, we have things that can beat the meta, can win against meta, um, rogue, or things that need a good pilot, and then everything else. Um, now, obviously it's a local level, so it kind of depends on how strong your locals are. If you have a lot of players who play meta, then maybe you're going to need to play some of the higher tier decks to have success, um, or you're going to need to specifically know what they're playing, kind of side deck against that and stuff like that. Um, uh, or if you're just planning on going to a lot of locals, then, uh, you know, this is something as well to help you. But just kind of keep the uh, level of locals in mind. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of tiers, uh, or a whole bunch of decks here. Um, it's not everything, but <clears throat> it's definitely something. Uh, so let's start off with Altergeist. Altergeist get, did get some new cards. However, I don't really expect it to be doing all that well. It's still a trap deck that doesn't really do a whole lot with its traps and with how incredibly powerful a lot of decks are with the amount of interactions that they can put up or more specifically the amount of plays that they can continue to make and continue to push through it means that something like altergeist just doesn't really do enough yes it technically can have a lot uh, going for it and can end on some pretty decent boards but even after all of that you still kind of need to draw really specific cards in order to make that happen however i do think that there is a good chance that you have the ability to take um, to take a local. So, do keep that in mind. Um, anyway, moving on, we have a Branded Chimera. Honestly, because it's branded and because of how much people like Branded, I think that this being the natural evolution of Branded, being the most recent cards, and being the newest type of card out, uh, as in type of monster, that being the Illusions, I do expect this to be more heavily represented than probably at other levels. And the main reason for this is, as I mentioned previously, all of those other things, um, but it's just something that people probably already have. Branded has been meta for a while. You don't really have to pick up as many cards, especially the extra deck, which tends to be the most expensive. So it's, you know, a very easy sell for a lot of players. So I do expect this to be one of the most heavily represented in the current metagame um, at your more local level. Uh, yeah, I, I think Branded has been meta, or has been relatively uh, common at the uh, local level since its release, basically. Next up, we have Dark World. Uh, Dark World is interesting. I think that it's actually pretty good um, at a more local level, because I think not as many people are aware of necessarily how to beat it and how to play around it. And I also think that not as many decks are able to compete with it at a very uh, high level. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, all, I mean, Dark World basically plays by itself most of the time, and I think a lot of players aren't really prepared for that. Um, like, for example, I don't think as many people are going to be playing uh, things like Droll to necessarily beat this. Um, so, yeah, just kind of stuff like that. But it also can just, you know, die to its own hands and just not see enough, um, enough gas to really get going. So kind of depends, uh, but I still think it's pretty good. That's that, that's more or less it. Next up, we have Branded. Now, this isn't the same as Branded Chimera. This would be more, more like Branded Despia. Um, I think this one has just fallen off quite a bit, but it still can win. It's still very good, and it's still something that can uh, definitely compete and definitely take locals um, or even some higher level tournaments. Um, but I do definitely think that it is the weaker version as compared to the Chimera version. Uh, but I, stu I still think that this is a likely deck to see at a locals because 
Again, it's something that people will probably already have, and it's still pretty decent in the current meta, so they're like, eh, I'll just play it, and it'll do fine. <clears throat> dinos. I want to put this pretty high because I think people really like dinos, and that's basically it. Uh, I don't necessarily think that this is a bad deck. I think it's definitely seen less success since the miscellaneous limitation, as well as since the meta has basically power crept it. But I do think that all in all, the deck is still pretty strong. And I think that a lot of people really do like this. It's kind of a pet deck. And because of that, I expect it to be more heavily played. And uh, yeah, it, it also doesn't really have necessarily a terrible matchup against anything. Something that's like just a straight loss against any of the current decks. Um, and so because of that, I think Dino is fairly well positioned um, at that lower level. Next up, Dragon Link. Dragon Link, I still think is going to be pretty prevalent at locals, mostly for testing, to see if the deck has died or not. But even with that being said, even if it is just to test it, I still think that it is very strong. Yes, one Magnema, one uh, Chaos Space does matter quite heavily. Um, but all things considered, I still think that the deck is very strong and there is a lot of um, play for the deck to have. And yeah, that's basically it. I mean, this deck has seen so many different metas come and go and so many different limitations and the deck is still kicking because of how strong dragons are and uh, I think people just really like the style of the deck um, but I do expect this to be now that I'm thinking about it I do expect this also to be less common because of how long it has been around uh, so something like branded is actually less or like has been around for less time than something like Dragon Link. Dragon Link has literally been around even longer than Branded. So maybe people are getting sick of it. Hard to say. But I still think that it's definitely something to watch out for and is very strong. Uh, moving on, we have Drytron. Drytron's fine. Um, I think with the reduction of the amount of bestials, as well as specifically not having a Rise Heart to be as common, I think Kashira was pretty common at locals, just given the fact that it was a rather simple and easy deck to pilot to just get great victories um, and kind of beat a lot of different decks, while also still being a good deck to take to more competitive events. Um, I do think that with that dropping off and not seeing as much play, I expect the Drytron players to still be able to play the game now that they don't have to deal with a macro cosmos that also banishes more cards. Uh, but all things considered, I do think that this deck is still lacking in quite a bit of its quality, specifically going second. I think that's the biggest issue with this deck is that it doesn't really have a great push going second, and it's a bit more inconsistent, especially with, I believe, Ava's banned. I do not remember if Ava is banned specifically in the OCG or in the TCG, or if it's both, or if it's just one. So... There's that. Um, but all things considered, I know that like Ben 10 is limited in some regard, as well as the um, there's at least some limitation on Ava. So I do think that that hurts the deck. And uh, it's basically kind of just Floodgate Turbo with... Um, what is it? The, uh, the, the Vanities of some kind. Vanities Fiend? Vanities Emptiness? No, not Vanities Emptiness. Vanities Ruler? Vanities Fiend. I don't know. Anyway... The point is, I really don't think that this deck is great, um, but you could still do good with it. I, I, I mean, not everyone's going to be prepared for a big old combo fest that ends on a uh, big floodgate. Um, so, there's that. Next up, we have Eldritch. Eldritch, I actually think, is probably better suited specifically at locals, because I think not as many people are going to be prepared for floodgates. Um, that's kind of it. I just think that floodgates are a bit stronger at the lower levels because people people don't know how to play around it. People might just immediately scoop seeing the floodgates and stuff like that, or like not try and play it out. Um, and I think because of things like time rules and what have you, uh, people are probably going to not do as well into said floodgates and probably play uh, poorly around said time and stuff like that. Uh, so all things considered, I think that Eldritch, just because of that nature, is a little bit stronger and why I'm putting it a little bit higher. Uh, next up, we have Pendulum. We don't have Electromite. Now, I know that this is in Dimion and not all Pendulum, but this is basically going to be my here's Pendulum and, like, other such Pendulum stuff. I really don't think Pendulum is very good. Um, I think people just... 
one, I think you have to be a really good pilot to be able to pilot Pendulum effectively enough to get the same results as a lot of the other top tier strategies. And on top of that, I think that it's something that kind of gets hurt by a lot of the other side deck options. Things like Dimensional Barrier, things like Anti-Spell Fragrance, things like Lightning Storm, etc. tend to have similar issues um, and like similar Pendulum outs, basically, uh, or, or outs to Pendulum boards that would also hit other top tier strategies. So it's just kind of caught in the crossfire, um, at least as of right now. And I don't expect that to be changing anytime soon. Uh, so yeah, um, just not all that great. Uh, speaking of the other Pendulum deck, I think Draco Slayer's slightly better. Uh, and that's just mostly due to the fact that it doesn't really require as much investment into the same things that a lot of the other Pendulum strategies are. It doesn't really require the Electromite as much. Um, and I think being able to search out a field spell when the field spells that are currently available in the game are so powerful against a wide variety of decks uh, does provide a lot of value to it, uh, or at least for it, right? Being able to search out something like the Sky Iris to add additional advantage is very strong in this current meta and stuff like that. However, even with that being said, I don't expect this deck to do exceptional. I'm actually going to put it no, I'm going to put it above Alter guys, but not by much. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, but it's, it is going to be, like, all of the pet decks as well. Um, so there's that. Uh, next up, Live Twin. I'm going to put Live Twin actually pretty high, mostly because of Sprite Runic Live Twin stuff. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I think Live Twin also just has a pretty decent matchup, being able to side deck so many cards, being able to play a myriad of hand traps and the like, which I think is pretty good. Uh, especially at a local level where you're going to not necessarily see all of the top meta um, and not necessarily have to have uh, side deck options or even main deck options for those types of things. So being able to play more a wide variety of lower impact cards tends to be more impactful. Exosister. Um, I don't know. Exos is just not very good. Yeah, that's all that I have to say. It's fine. Like, it works when it works, but most of the time, it just doesn't, and almost everyone has an out to this, uh, whether that's a Kaiju, whether that's a uh, a Harpy's Feather Duster, whether that's a uh, an Ash Blossom, whether, like, they're, almost everything hurts Exosister, but yeah, when they are able to basically go uninterrupted, they're pretty good. However, they do, I mean, I don't expect Tier to be very prominent at locals so i don't expect them to have like their only good matchup however flu i think is like one of the best decks it's so very simple that a lot of people can't really mess it up and because of that it's also very cheap which is also another thing um so i do expect this to be one very prevalent and two very good mostly because the people who would normally mess up more complicated decks like something like unchained or dragon link or stuff like that, um, they're not really going to have as hard of a time playing something like Flu and seeing success with it. Um, also, there's a lot of decks that just can't really deal with a Flu end board, and uh, also a lot of decks that can't deal with Dimension Shifter. So I do expect this to be pretty good and something to watch out for, or even just pick up yourself. It's also fairly cheap, and you can definitely build it on a budget. Um, so there's that. Next up, we have Fur Hire, which would be the Fur Hire Runic Sprite. Now, here's the thing. I don't expect it to do very good, and it's honestly not that great in the current metagame, and you do really have to know the deck, but the thing is, it's such a pet deck that if this ever does actually show up, it's probably someone who's very invested into this deck, and he's probably going to take it to higher success, as well as higher level events, because they actually enjoy the deck. So this is one of those things where it's like, this is mostly based on the player, which I would imagine is someone who's actually going to commit and know how the deck plays and know how to run it and know all of the intricacies of it, um, etc., etc. So all things considered, I don't necessarily expect you to play against this. In fact, I'd be more surprised if you did play against this than if you didn't play against this. But it is also one of those things that I would expect is going to see some sort of play. Um, or if it does see play, that is going to be someone who actually knows what they're doing. Uh, next up, Gold Pride Punk. Honestly, this is probably a deck that you would expect to see, uh, but it's not all that great. Uh, it's decent, but not insane by any capacity. Um, some of the end boards are tricky to deal with, but I think a lot of people can just read the card and be like, oh, okay, 
this is what it does. Cool. Now you lose in time, you know. Uh, I also think that it has similar issues to a lot of the other decks um, with its, like, consistency uh, and a lot of, like, the lower stuff. I also don't think that it's... No, I, I mean, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Um, I don't expect a lot of people to play it, though. Heroes! Dear Lanta, so many people will play Heroes, but because of that, I think everyone is just going to know how to play against Heroes, and it's not really going to do well against some of the more top-tier stuff. <clears throat> That's basically it. Um, it also gets hurt by a lot of the other side deck options that people are expecting, etc. Um, maybe I'd put it up here. No, I'm, I'm going to put it here. Uh, yeah, it's just mostly like the familiarity that everyone has with heroes and what heroes do. That really kind of hurts them. <clears throat> Adagnister. Uh, Adagnister is fine for the most part. Um, I, don't, I don't see it being exceptionally good, but it's decent. It can win. Uh, Infernoble. Infernoble is actually really good, I would say, and definitely a deck to watch out for. <clears throat> Infernoble is a fan favorite, uh, so I do expect more and more people to actually be playing it than something lower on the list, um, even though I do think that this isn't as strong at higher levels. Uh, it's also a very just linear combo deck where you just do the same combo you end on the same board, and you basically just prevent your opponent from playing the game after doing a long combo, which those decks tend to do better at locals because people are playing a wide variety of decks that either can or, like, can't really play hand traps or play less hand traps and stuff like that, and so that does matter um, quite a bit. <clears throat> also, yes, you can't really play that well into into a going second board. I'm also going to put this Manadimium up here because they basically mean the same thing. Um... Yes, you can't really do very well going second, but I think that matters a lot less with less powerful decks in the format. Um, so, there's that. Next up, Cash Tira. Uh, Cash Tira I ex still expect to see a lot of play, but I don't expect it to do as well. However, being able to go like Fenrir, Unicorn, Pass is still very strong, given the fact that being able to banish a card face down um, from the extra deck as well as from the main... Uh, or um, after a monster effect is activated, is very strong. So, all things considered, I still expect it to do pretty well. Yes, there's no Rise Heart, but you could still play it, like, blind going second and stuff like that. So, I do expect this to be pretty good and to see a lot of play, which is kind of weird. Um, but, yeah. Labyrinth. Labyrinth is probably the... Um, probably the best deck as of right now uh, that we've talked about for a locals. It's very simple. It's very easy. It's a deck that people will tilt and just refuse to play because they don't like the way that it plays. Um, and it's very strong. It's just a good deck. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Marincess. Marincess is fine. I don't expect it to do great though. Um, I'm gonna, I, Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to move these down. I don't think that they're as good as I've made them out to be. Uh, but Marincess is actually pretty good. I think Cybers just gets better and better as time goes on. And this happens to be a Cybers deck. So it happens to be better. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, I also think that because of the fact that there is no more Arise Heart in the format, you are easy more easily able to actually utilize your graveyard, which matters quite significantly. Speaking of which, um, Mathemax. Mathemax is probably the best of the Cybers, but I wouldn't say it's much higher than most of this other stuff probably better than gold gold pride at the very least but all in all i really don't expect this deck to do too well it's fine that's kind of it it's fine anyway moving on melfi melfi's just not great um plunder if there is a plunder pilot at your local you're probably fucked you're probably not going to have a good time. And the reason for that is because they're probably pretty good at the deck because it's probably their pet deck and they want to play it um, as much as they can. And because it is a local, you are more likely to see uh, decks that aren't just using like one specific attribute and you're more likely to see a wide variety of those attributes, which specifically helps this deck in particular. Um, on top of that, I think that Plunder is just pretty good in general. Uh, it's it's a deck that I've just consi consistently thought has been slept on. 
Uh, I don't think it's insane by any capacity, but I do think that it is just good in general. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Pearly's the best deck. Moving on. Uh, I really don't think I need to explain this one. Uh, Pearly is just that strong. Yep. Uh, speaking of which, I'm also going to do Unchained here. Uh, Unchained is also literally the best deck in the format, I would imagine. And I think a lot of people will play it. I think a lot of people will do poorly with it. But I think it won't matter because it's that strong. I think if they watch like one video, they'll probably understand it. And if they play the deck like once, they'll probably be able to understand what they should go for and what they should end on at the very least. Um, so yeah, all things considered, I think that this is a very strong contender. Speaking of which, uh, Rescue Ace. Rescue Ace is probably up here as well. I'm, I'm going to put it here. Um, reason for Rescue Ace being so high, uh, being able to set four and pass and having four interactions tends to be very, very strong against lower level opponents and lower level decks. So that's basically it. And there's not a high chance that this is going to be interrupted. So being able to have just Rescue Ace fully resolve is pretty strong. Um, however, the boards are pretty easy to break. So if a, an opponent is playing, say, a going second deck, I think that this becomes a little bit worse. But all things considered, it's still very strong and very simple. Uh, next up, Rika. Uh, Rika really does just require the most powerful pilot. Uh, I think it's it, I think it's definitely good, and if we were talking about a YCS level, I would probably put this significantly higher, but it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, you can have a really strong plant deck, and if you don't have a good player to go with it, you're probably going to be just fine. Like, you don't really need to worry about this. Uh, runic. Now, notably, we've talked about some other Runic variants. This is Runic Stun. It's probably just as good as that Lich. Um... That's it. I think Eldritch might actually be better simply due to the fact that you can play more Floodgates. And Eldritch is also a removal spell in hand and a big body on field, which matters a bit more because it does allow you to actually go to the battle phase as opposed to with the Runic stuff not actually allowing that. Next up, Salomon Great. Salomon Great is honestly pretty good as of right now, and I do expect it to do a little bit better. I'm actually going to put it above Kashira. Um, yeah, Salomon Great's just pretty decent. Its strategy is solid. It allows you to um, go first and go second because of the fact that you're cyber stuff. Um, and it also can play things like it goes in to just lock your opponent out, which is fun post siding. Uh, on top of that, I think it's just a decently strong deck in the current metagame. Um, and uh, at locals, it just I, I just expect it to do, to do well as well. Scareclaw, I'm actually going to put right next to Manadimium, which seems thematically appropriate, but it's actually because uh, Scareclaw happens to do some very interesting things that, while they don't play very well against a lot of the top decks or against a lot of top players, against lower decks and lower level players, I think that it happens to have a stronger appeal and a stronger overall success rate. Because, one... It's very efficient at OTKing through pretty weak boards. And two, it is able to set up a board that a lot of people aren't familiar with and will then therefore make misplays into in like a game one scenario, right? Having basically a Baguska does mean that people will be like, oh, I can activate this effect. Okay, I'm going to try and target this. I'm going to try and interact with this in some capacity and end up just like screwing themselves out of an interaction that they could have used on other things. Um, so stuff like that. Um, I also just think that it is likely to be seen a little bit more similar to things like Manadimium and um, the the Infernoble, mostly because people like it. That's basically it. Um, so uh, this isn't necessarily up here because it's as strong, it's mostly up here because I expect it to be more prevalent. Speaking of which, Sky Striker. Sky Strikers, okay, I gotta put it a little bit higher. I don't actually think that this deck is very good, but at the local level, you will see it a ton, and it will have success because of just, like, the amount of games being played, basically. Uh, but more specifically, because I do believe that uh, Sky Striker has a pretty solid game overall. I think the control strategy is not something that everyone is going to be prepared for, and uh, they're not really prepared to play slower games. 
And because of that, they might not get to games two and three and not be able to scoop things up fast enough and understand like how the deck functions kind of and uh, all of that. Also, this deck can just randomly OTK out of nowhere, which is really fun. Moving on to Sprite. <clears throat> Sprite's pretty good. Um, I expect it actually probably to do really well. Um, this is more this is more like Sprite Runic rather than anything else in particular. Uh, yeah, Sprite Runic's pretty good, just in general. There you go. I just realized maybe this should be like Natureia Runic. We'll just leave it there. I don't think. Yeah, we'll say that this one's Natureia Runic. Natureia Runic's fine. I think it's just significantly weaker than it was previously, and because of that I don't expect a lot of people to play it, and I also don't expect it to do all that well because without the multiple copies of the trap to, like, discard and to, you know, refill your hand with, uh, I don't expect it to do as much. Next up, Sword Soul. Uh, Sword Soul is also just really strong, all things considered. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything to say about this. Uh, being able to do the same thing consistently, similarly to these guys, while also being able to reliably play interactions that um, not as many people are able to deal with, like Vishada, like um, the the evil long one, as well as the myriad of other things that it can potentially do, is uh, is very nice. On top of that, it's just a pet deck that a lot of people really enjoy, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The, the things that I've said about a lot of the other decks at the top. Uh, I would imagine this is, like, Synchron, which is fine. Synchron, I think, has similar issues to Dark World, where it kind of just loses to itself. But it also has similar issues to these guys, where it also loses very hard going second. It does have quite a bit that it can do on its first turn, but it also might just brick and have nothing which is likely because there aren't as there aren't enough options for it to kind of do um, if it doesn't see like very specific cards also it dies to like ash so there's that tier i'm gonna put it lower here's the thing i think tier is one of the current best decks in the format however I'm going to put it slightly lower because it is a such a difficult deck to play and to play properly. To know like which tier names you've used and to not like mess that up and stuff like that. Now that doesn't matter as much at locals as it does in like a major tournament, but I do think that overall it is still something to be aware of and like it's going to still cause issues, right? Um, but all in all, I think that the deck has a lot of ground to play and uh, is just really, really strong. I actually played it today on stream, and uh, yeah, the deck's really, really good. Next up, we have uh, Trap Trick. Trap Trick is solid. Um, I'm going to put it below Branded. I'm going to move. There. There. I think Trap Trick's just solid because like main decking evenly matched and stuff like that it tends to just catch people off guard. And also it's Trap Trick and Trap Cards. Hooray. Uh, also now, Trap Trick has the ability to OTK with Adipus, which is something that I think a lot of people aren't really prepared for. Um, yeah, that's basically it. It's also budget. Uh, Lyralisk, I think, is a deck that is heavily slept on, uh, especially at lower levels. I think people just aren't really prepared for the interactions that are specifically available in this deck. Sure, you can't go for like some org into Barrier Statue or some org into um, Apex Avian or anything like that, but you can still end on quite a formidable board, especially if the pilot is good. Um, so yeah, all things considered, I do think that it is still very strong and a definitely slept on, especially at the lower levels. Uh, and then Vanquish Soul. Vanquish Soul I expect to do pretty well. Uh, yeah, it plays a bunch of hand traps. It plays a wide variety of different interactions and can play through uh, quite a bit. It it plays a very low to the ground resource style of a game, which is actually very strong right now, but I don't see it being all that great. Um, but it's definitely a fan favorite. So uh, I do expect it. Uh, I, I would expect to see it quite a bit. But yeah, that's basically it for my list. Um, it's kind of the same tier list that you would do uh, for some of the higher events, uh, but I definitely think that there are some shakeups. But all things considered, 
um, yeah, this is basically the list for locals, uh, at least in my opinion. If you guys agree with me, let me know down below in the comments. If you disagree and you would think that there should be um, some change up here or there, let me know. Uh, also, let me know what you guys do at locals. What what decks do you play and uh, what decks do you see at locals? Because uh, for me, most of it is just meta. It's just these like top tier strategies and uh, that's basically it. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy it. If you did, I like this very much. I appreciate it. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.